Now we're ready to plot our course on the map. So simply select map, and now we have our sectional chart in front of us. There's a couple different ways that we can um, draw out our flight plan route. Um, we can either click and hold on the airport that we want to use. Let me just zoom in a little bit. We can click on this. And then now I have a bunch of uh, things listed here, anything from airports to intersections to VORs, NDBs. And that's because I've selected all at the bottom. If I want to just have the airports appear, I could have just done that. I usually leave mine on all in case I want to select something else. Anyways, we'll select Greenville, and that starts our flight plan. And then we can scroll over here to Columbia, click and hold that for a second, and then I find the Columbia Airport and select that. And now my flight plan is already drawn on the chart. That's a little bit easier than having to use the paper version and flip it over back and forth. So now, an, a different way that you can uh, get this line on here is by clicking flight plan. And I'm going to clear that just for a second to show you. So if I clicked on flight plan, it says tap here to create a route. So I could have also just done this, Kilo Golf Mike Uniform, enter, and then Kilo Charlie Alpha Echo, enter, and the line is also drawn. Okay. So with this line drawn here, the next thing we have to do is select our aircraft. So in the top right, we select aircraft. And we're using 8700 PAPA today. So I'll click that. And it shows um, Cessna 172S. So yes, that's correct. And then I want to choose my altitude. When I click this, this box pops open. And it alerts me of if I'm going to have a headwind or a tailwind. And for our particular flight, <clears throat> we're going to fly at 5,500. So when I scroll down the altitudes here, I notice that they're mostly IFR altitudes. Well, that's because IFR has been selected down below. So what I want to do is select VFR, so VFR altitudes um, appear. So 5,500, the winds are calm. Now, in the earlier videos that were filmed, uh, we had different winds, so just disregard the fact that they happen to be calm in this particular video. Um, this isn't going to be the exact same flight plan as the one that we made on paper. It'll just be similar. Anyways, moving on, it says that our uh, time will be about 48 minutes. And over here, it says that our fuel burn is going to take 10.6 gallons for the whole journey. Now, I'm going to select this, but then I have to open it back up here for a second. Um, I want to point something out here. Um, if you are, if you made this flight at 2,000 feet, it says you would burn 9.8 gallons, and then it increases your fuel burn as you climb higher and higher. This isn't necessarily logical because uh, typically if we fly a little higher, our true airspeed increases, which means your ground speed's going to increase versus flying lower, and you typically would burn less fuel if you go a little higher. Now, if we flew really high, it would make sense that we burn more fuel because we're going to burn more fuel in the climb. But flying 82 miles at 5,500 is a pretty decent uh, fuel burn. So these numbers down here are probably not very accurate, but the computer is calculating this from the true airspeed we put in, which was 105. But remember, we, we came up with that true airspeed of 105 from looking at the 5,500 chart. So these numbers are going to be off slightly. Okay, so we're, we've selected 5,500, and we can close that. The next thing is we want to update our estimated time of departure. So we'll click this open. And let's say that we wanted our estimated time of departure was going to be 1900 Zulu, which is around 3 p.m. local. So we can simply update this to 3 p.m. And close that. Next, we want to pack our bag. So we're going to click on this little symbol right here. And we could do this now or we could do it later, but it takes a couple minutes for this to download. So I like to do it at this point in my cross-country flight planning. That way it has a time to download while I'm doing some other things. So we'll go ahead and pack this. Oh, and by the way, we can select all or we can select individual things. So we'll pack all of this. And that'll be downloading some information on my iPad while I'm continuing with my flight plan. Uh, what information is it giving me? It's going to download uh, things such as en route weather or notums about the airports or any other information like that. 
Okay, our next step is going to be to go to export and then we're going to click on flights and what we want to do is click on nav log because we want to get the information about where is our top of climb going to be, where is our top of descent going to be, and then we're going to end up filling in some other checkpoints. So this nav log you can print out if you want to have a paper copy to take with you, but don't print it out right now because we have some more points to add in, but at the end when we're finished you can print it out and take it with you. So up at the top it's telling us that we have a flight plan from Golf Mike Uniform to Charlie Alpha Echo. It has our time and the aircraft and our altitude and our performance. It tells us about our estimated time and route, the distance and some other information. And now we get down here to the waypoints. And so far we have Golf Mike Uniform, the top of climb, top of descent, and then Charlie Alpha Echo, our destination. So if we scan across here we'll see airway, magnetic heading and course, our altitude, the wind, um, this is our, uh, alti uh, excuse me, our temperature in relation to standard atmosphere, so it's telling us we're like plus 15 degrees hotter than standard, and then over here we have uh, our speed and true air speed and ground speed, and then we have the distance. So it's saying that it's going to take us about 12 miles from the point that we departed the runway till we reach our top of climb. So we want to take a look at that and we'll go back to our maps and we'll mark on our chart where 12 miles away is. All we have to do is hold a finger and thumb down there or two fingers, it doesn't matter, and I'm looking for about a distance of 12 miles away from the airport. Alright, and that looks like about 12 miles and I'll let that go. And we happen to be parallel to a VFR checkpoint anyways and it looks like we're crossing over a power line. So I'll just press and hold this, try not to um, bend my line here, and when I release it, it gives me a location and lo uh, latitude and longitude. If I press this, it drops a little marker here to identify my first leg which is from takeoff to the top of climb. The next thing I want to do is make some checkpoints along the way. Your examiner is looking for you to make a checkpoint about every 10 or 15 miles along the route. So if we use our little ruler and we see where that's about 10 miles and that's about 15 miles, so somewhere in here would be a great checkpoint and I can see that there's a railroad track and a road that should be quite visible from our altitude and that would make a great checkpoint. So I can just press and hold that, a lat longitude appears, I press that and it drops another point on there for me. And then looking forward on our route, we again measure out about somewhere between 10 and 15 miles. If it's a little bit longer than that, that's okay. If it's a little bit shorter, that's okay. Um, we'll make this one a little bit longer because I see a great checkpoint down the road here at the Newberry Airport. And that one happens to be about 23 miles away. Now if I were uncomfortable with this distance, I could always move this checkpoint if I wanted to. So I could take this checkpoint and slide it over here and uh, use this other airport and road intersection. So once we've made these checkpoints, we can always move them around as necessary. Okay? The next thing we're interested in is where should we start our descent? So we have our top of climb, and then we have a checkpoint, checkpoint, and now we need to know where to descend. Well, if we looked back into our export and back in the flight to find our nav log and then open our nav log back up, and what we want to know is the distance between our top of descent and the Columbia Airport. So if I look over here to the side, it looks like 20 miles. So then I can open my map back up and it's telling me that it suggests that I begin my descent 20 miles from Columbia, which happens to be right about here, all right, and that looks like right beside this little leg of the lake. That should be easy to see from the air. So we'll drop another marker there. So how my flight plan is set right now is that this will be the top of climb, this is first checkpoint, second checkpoint, top of descent, and then we go down to the airport. 